Registered Phenomena Code 302 Object Class Beta Red Hazard Types Sentient Hazard Organic Hazard Biological Hazard Containment Protocols The 50 RPC-302 specimens are to be contained in a plexiglass terrarium. Due to the biochemical effects created by the parasites, all personnel entering the containment chamber that houses the RPC-302 specimens are to be equipped with a hazmat suit. The air filters in Site-045 are to be checked for any chemical disturbances on a daily basis. The RPC-302 instances are to be fed twice a day. The meals consist of food appropriate to the dietary needs of the instances. RPC-302 instances eat smaller arthropods, as well as small reptiles and mammals. Description: RPC-302 is a species of insectoid parasites found in Africa. Due to the fact that they primarily target humans instead of preying on more plentiful hosts, they are believed to have been genetically engineered. All members of the species are solitary organisms, with no queen or equivalent thereof. They average between 0.5 to 2 cm in length and have a lifespan of roughly one year. There are no males in the species, with females reproducing asexually inside of a host. RPC-302 is a three-stage lifespan, the larval stage, juvenile, and adult. A report of each stage in the lifespan can be found below. Larval Stage The larval stage of RPC-302, like most other larvae, is abandoned shortly after being hatched. The larvae resemble maggots and armored caterpillars and possess a horn in their head resembling the kind found on several species of rhinoceros beetle. The horn is used to help penetrate the surface of whatever part of the body they reside in, though this cannot be done through the horn alone. To assist in this process, RPC-302 specimens are capable of spitting chloric acid. Given that this trait has yet to be shown by any adult RPC-302 instances, it is believed that the acid spraying ability is lost in the next phase. Outside of the human body, the larvae will eat whatever they can to survive. Using a combination of their horn and chloric acid, the larvae will prey on smaller insects and small newborn reptiles. Subjects average 0.1 to 5 cm in length and weigh a total of 2 to 10 grams. In addition to their legs, subjects also possess the ability to shoot silk in order to create a path to wherever they may go in. The silk is similar in composition to spider silk, and has shown much of the same qualities. Juvenile Stage Like several species of insect, RPC-302 possesses a cocoon stage. Two months after hatching, the larva will attempt to find an appropriate location for the process to begin. The subject will wrap itself in silk and undergo metamorphosis. Like caterpillars, the subject is completely melted when inside the cocoon, and retains all the memories of its former self. The cocoon takes about one to two weeks to hatch. The mass and dimensions of the cocoon varies on how much the subject has consumed during its larval stage, but the cocoon is usually twice as large in both mass and dimensions as its user. Adult Stage The adult form, in addition to the loss of its acid spraying ability, also loses the ability to spray silk. However, the subject retains the horn, which is now even larger. The subject is also much faster, being able to spread at speeds of 160 cm per second. After emerging from its cocoon, the subject will attempt to enter a host body, typically an adult human being, through the air cavity and crawling into the hippocampus section of the brain. Individuals that have fallen victim to RPC-302 are henceforth referred to as RPC-302-1. After a few days of getting accustomed to the host body, RPC-302 will inject the brain with chemicals capable of causing flashbacks and hallucinations, both visual and auditory. The subject will lay eggs inside the RPC-302-1 instance and will wait approximately two days for them to hatch. After this, both the larvae and the mother will leave the host body, usually killing them. The mother dies within an hour of leaving the host body. Retrieval Log 
On 80, several reports of people having panic attacks for seemingly no reason were filed in Africa. Most of the said people were not known to have had them prior to this incident, which sparked the interest of the authority. Dr. Miller T. Johnson, a clinical psychologist at the RPC Authority, was dispatched, alongside MST Zulu-45, backwater filterers, to investigate. The RPC-302 instances were captured, however, one managed to escape and enter the brain of Dr. Johnson. After he experienced several symptoms of becoming an RPC-302-1 instance, Dr. Johnson was taken into medical custody and was the subject of a cranial surgery operation. The following interview was conducted when Dr. Johnson was housing an RPC-302 instance inside of his body. Interview Log 302 80 Interviewer Dr. Vincent Hugo Interviewee Dr. Miller T. Johnson Dr. Johnson, take a seat please. Alright, I apologize for my outburst earlier. It's alright. Would you please go into detail about what you felt during the panic attack two hours ago? No, please, no, I I'd rather not. I'm sorry sir, but you need to. You are required to by order of the highest authority. Fine, but you owe me something for this. About half a day after the night we found the damn things, I started to feel an itching sensation on the back of my head. I presumed it to be nothing. Perhaps I just didn't take a shower for a while, but then it happened. Elaborate. Don't act like you don't know what happened. I started seeing… things. Things I'd like to forget. I flashed back to the night my father found out that I was dating another boy. He started to beat me with a fucking steel chair until my back started to fracture. After that, he called the institution and uh, I don't want to say what happened. Shortly after this, Dr. Johnson gets up with tears in his eyes. The subject goes into a state of mental distress. Dr. Johnson, if you do not calm down, we will be forced to remove you. Johnson flips the table, fracturing Hugo's knees. Dr. Hugo calls the security guard with his radio. Shortly after, Dr. Johnson picks up his metal chair and swings it in no specific direction and starts rambling incoherently. Amongst other things, the phrases, Dad, I like women too, Dad, stop it, and not the white walls can be heard. Dr. Johnson was tased by a security guard. End of log. After the event, Johnson was operated on and the RPC-302 instance was removed. The subject was soon anesthetized out of request. The specimen was successfully retrieved without killing it. The instance was pregnant, but had yet to lay any eggs. The young were hatched a few days later, and were used in the report detailing the lifespan of RPC-302.